So you've made a video game and now looking for answer how to make a good safe system for it. Then you definitely found the right video. My name is Andrew, I am indie game developer and creator of the game Druid Test of Faith and today I will tell you how to make a system with my game as example. But first we must make a choice which method we will use to save game data. Because there are several different methods for saving data in Unity. And the first one is player prefs. The player prefs will allow you to create a different type of variables and save with variables to your device register. That's a pretty simple method that could be implemented in one string, but it's really hard to debug later. Just try to imagine what you have a single player game with about a hundred enemies, and when you kill some one of them, you're trying to add with data to a register, you're trashing a register, you're ruining everything and if something gets wrong, you have no idea where is this place. And just as addition to it, you must understand that before start every new debug session, you will have to re-erase all your register data over and over again. And that's quite annoying. So this method will fit only for small games with short amount of data. The another one method is to build constructor, which will collect all your data from your game and save it via one script. Well, this method is quite good, but also quite trashy. Because in this case you will have to make a script to collect all your data across all your game, over and over again, for every save iteration. And that method will lead you to lots of troubles with getting certain data from a certain script. You will have to attach it, find it where some way, and uh, that's quite annoying also. And the last one method which I would like to show you and let you implement is globals. So the main idea here is to create special static script with variables which we will save via only one single line of code. We can reach this script and its data from any script all over our project and change its values whatever we wish to. And with help of these globals we can easily control all our project data. So the first thing we need to do here is to create special public static global class and make it system.serializable. Afterward, we will need to add here some static public variables. You can add variables whatever you wish to or whatever you will need to. I will show you my variables and how it works. The most important advantage of globals method is what now we can save our data with different types, same as lists and dictionaries. When same method as player prefs won't allow us to do it at all, and constructor won't allow us to do it without formatting. Next, we need to write special script for global script serialization. Well, basically, if you are wondering, the serialization method is a method to transform your script to binary format. Both scripts which we will need to with data safe format are about 100 lines of code. I do not wish to waste your time by writing it line by line, so please rewrite it from your screen. And if for some reason you do not wish to rewrite this code manually, you can support me and my game on Patreon and download this code from where. Or you can try to write me at my Discord server and I will directly send you this code. So, next C sharp script we must create is Save System Controller. I guess this system controller will not fit all your needs, but I will describe you how it works and you will be able to implement your own. And first one method is here public static void save game. After we made our global sense realization system, this public static void save game will allow us to save data from any place we would like to. In the first line, the bool status, we're making our globals to be serialized and sent to defined path. And actually, what's it? We need only one line. The second line is only shortcut for my debug system and only allows me to see the saving status. And yes, if you would like to, you can change it to standard debug.log. Next, let's deal with loading game method. The first one line here is checking if game save file exists in defined path. Afterward, in first line again, just loading its data to globals class. Afterward, we need to check is last save scene name exists or not. That variable will serve us as definition did we save our game previously or not. And in this one last long line, I'm loading the game asynchronously. Well, I need this async loading just to display in loading bar between scenes, but you may not need it. And for that reason, you can download it with a simple scene manager. And the last one part of this code defines what we start a new game. We are checking do we have a last scene name saved, and if it's no, we definitely start a new game. And now we need to download default values, download default scene, and same as previous time, we need to just simply download with scene. And now, when save system controller is ready, we can save our game with a single line of code. So in my game, I will use save points for saving, and that's how it works. 
Right before saving, I must set to my global script few variables, same as scene name and last save point name, and afterward, with a single line of code, I am saving the game. And also, there is a tiny trick with last save time. With one trick will allow user to spam save event. Well, there is one more thing I should explain you. This one script derives from interactable class. Basically, this one script collects an array of all interactable elements around player, and when player hits up button, all these interactable events triggers. And the last one place I should show you is load button. And as you can see, it's also extremely simple. One line of code where we send our slot ID to download current slot. And this one method sitting right on my game start button in the main menu. And yes, I'm using slots IDs because I would like to make my game have many slots for different players in future. So now let's start my game. And while it's launching, you can see how async loading is working. Now let's try to move a little bit side by side and jump. So, everything working quite fine, but my game is platformer and definitely have double jump mechanics. Let's try to turn it on. And to achieve it inside globals, we need to change double jump variable to true. Afterward, let's launch game one more time and check how it works. So, now we can proceed to this white spray in particles. That's my save point. And by pressing up, the game is saving. Now we can stop the game, return to global script and change double jump value back to false. And if now we will hit the start game button, we will download our player to last save point, and double jump will remain working. Marvelous. In the end, I would like to tell you what all my scripts and arts I show in video are available at Patreon and you can download it from there. And also, I should say thanks to my Patreon, S. Rose. Thank you, man! So, thank you for watching, I hope you knew something new, and see you in the next video!